Okay, here we go. I've got my super micro super server here. Yeah, see the branding on it? This is the one that runs my website, and it's been getting a little hot recently. It runs two Intel Xeon hyper-threaded processors that get rather hot. So I'm going to change out the thermal grease as the stuff in this one is probably pretty gungy by now. So I'll show the whole thing first. Some warnings on the side. I don't have it in a rack, so I took the rails off. Um, let's see. Grab it back. There we go. Those are all its ports. This is a SCSI RAID card. And this is the detachable the right amount of force power supply. Made by Ablecom. And I have the secondary power supply for it, but it failed. And so it beeps very, very loudly if you leave it in there. So I took it out. And it has been running very happily on one for quite a while now. No need to replace what isn't needed. I'm sure somebody will tell me otherwise, but hey, that's YouTube for you. Democracy of the highest order. Okay. Push these down and pull it. There's two on each side. Push them and pull off. So I will shake that off right now and I'll come back with the video in a second. Alright, I'm back. And now with the top off of the server. And it, it's got these four 80 millimeter fans. Uh, two 60 millimeters for the processors, which are not too hot right now. Uh, one passive heat radiator for the north bridge, held down by retention clips. Same as the CPUs that I will be, or the CPU sockets I will be detaching here in a second. Uh, that is the onboard SCSI controller. And. I couldn't tell you what that one is. And you got the Rage XL down here. Uh, pretty crappy graphics, I have to say, but it's a good thing I'm not using it for gaming. <laughs> I actually got the server for free. I love it. This is the second SCSI channel that hides in the corner here that has never been used. I bet you it doesn't even work. Because it was a secondary option. I think you needed actually another controller, too. This is the RAID card. This just allows uh, the RAID to be possible because it wasn't built into the onboard ROM. i get a better picture as soon as this damn thing focuses. Oh, there we go. Uh, I got 2 gigs of RAM in the form of 4 five, twelve sticks. And uh, this is where the power supplies are. Got the uh, Slimline DVD-ROM floppy drive, and under there, actually, you can see there's a third IDE cable running through this channel above the fans here and down into that. Uh, this server is built to run off of its SCSI drives as the boot drives, but I didn't like that because I wanted them all for storage. So I decided to use uh, an IDE drive as the boot drive. Plus it made it so I didn't have to uh, go find some antiquated uh, drivers, you know, when you're installing uh, a Windows, you have to press F6 to install third party RAID or SCSI drivers. Well, turns out I couldn't actually even find those for this. I could only find the ones for when Windows is on installed. Not for installing, just to install. And um, I had to end up doing that. But uh, overall, it works very well with the IDE drive in place. I'll show you, these are actually nice, really easy hot swap drives. Take a look at this. Just push this. Pops out, and you can pull out the drives. And I'll be back, back in a second. Okay, I'm going to start changing out. I'm going to take off the fan connectors first here. And there's another one for the other fan hiding back here. 
And then you can see these aren't too dirty actually. I recently cleaned them. But uh, they're just getting kind of hot. And I had to replace these fans. Both the original ones were bad. So I went to a uh, computer junk place and found two heat sinks in a box that were the exact same uh, for the same AMD processor. I just pulled the fans off so they'd be alike. And now it's all good. So to get these retention clips off, you got to get a screwdriver in there, push down, and sideways just like that. And you go again with this one over here, push down and out, which is kind of hard to do for my angle. There we go. And then they just come forward like this, and then they come off. And so I will do that with the other ones and get right back to you. Alrighty, I'm back and all four retention clips have now been removed and now I can remove the processor heatsink and fan. Let's see how bad this is. Oh, that's not too bad. It's just kind of gungy. And there is the processor die, or the heat spreader at least over it. I think these are, uh, these are, uh, no, these are uh, 604, uh, socket 604. And they're essentially Pentium 4s. Come on, focus camera. Huh. Made in Costa Rica. Cool. <laughs> A little dusty. Go back into your ZIF socket. There we go. It's back down. Okay, so I'm gonna first wipe off the heat sink and then I'll wipe off the processor. I just use a little bit, see if my camera will stay here, good, I think it will. I just use a little bit of 90%, or actually I guess this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's good, it's good stuff, not enough water content to really make a difference, so. And then I would usually use a anti-static, uh, anti, uh, or whatever it's called, non-lint making uh, rag. But since I don't have such amenities available to me in the location I'm at and I forgot to bring them, I will just use a usual, what you call it, uh, napkin. What I've done is I've put a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol on it. Never put it directly on the thing you're wiping. And I'm just gonna wipe in circular motions. I'm not sure if you can see that. I have to set my camera down on something. And unfortunately that something was the computer. <laughs> Pretty quick. Nice and clean. Now that I have a nice clean shiny surface, I will now begin cleaning the CPU heat spreader and I'm gonna put a little bit more alcohol on my uh, my rag and I'll get right to it. Oh, uh, you know what? I actually think it has enough on it. You don't want too much. That's a key thing to remember. You really do not want too much. You'll make a incredible mess. Look at that. It's already starting to become clean. You can actually read the writing on it. And this is actually a mix of Two, looks like somebody used a little bit of arctic silver and a little bit of uh, some other thermal grease. Processor is now quite clean and I'm about to uh, basically prime the surface which is taking a little bit of the uh, thermal conductivity fluid and spreading it around on there. 
uh, with a rag and some pressure so it just gets it into all the little cracks and crevices because this is, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a brushed metal surface. Same with that, which is very obviously to tell on it. So that's what I'm going to do and I'll get a video of it in a second, I just need to grab a rag. To even out the surface, I will now rub the thermal compound on. Take a very little bit of the arctic silver and carefully on a very little bit, just like that. The size of like a little piece of rice and then you take it with this and rub it on there. That's all you gotta do. Okay, so right here, what I'm doing is I am pasting the CPU. Uh, I'm using about the size of a puffed up piece of rice at first because what you want to do is achieve the thinnest layer possible because all you're doing is filling little gaps and cracks to make uh, the heat transfer easily. So really you just want the thinnest layer possible first and then from that very thin layer you can add more if you need to. Some people may think this method is flawed, I find it works really well and I've always had great conductivity. Some people like to just place a dot and uh, let this heat sink to it, uh, let it spread it out uh, by pressure. I don't like to do this um, and as you can see I spread it out nice and evenly with a card. It doesn't spread that uh, it doesn't always spread that well, especially when you're in a tight area and you have to bend the card a little bit, but no worries, you'll get it, as you can see in my next part here. I go really fast, I just make sure, <laughs> okay, so I'm not really this fast, I just sped the video up, but um, this just showing how I take the time to spread it all out, and I'll show again in the next one, add it a little bit more, spread it out, and it starts to look real nice. And go go at all different angles. It really doesn't matter. It's not like painting where it's gonna where somebody's gonna see it. As long as it makes contact well, you're good to go. I take a long time to do this, mostly because I want it to come out right each time. Okay, and now you can see the finished product. I think it looks rather good. And there's the unfinished. I gotta still do that one. And uh, right here, you can see I've just tinned or. Uh, essentially primed uh, where I spread on a little bit of the stuff and you can see this one's still clean and what I'm about you can see there it's unprimed that's primed that's unprimed that's primed again that's unprimed and it's uh, I had to do it a little closer to the uh, fan side because I know the processor technically sits closer because the socket isn't exactly even on both sides and here I am spreading out more thermal paste like a bouse. And uh, yeah, I will probably speed that up. I was very meticulous about this one. I wanted to make it look good and uh, it was a bit excessive. So I apologize for that. <laughs> okay, I will, uh, I, I will let the sped up video work its magic. And I don't think you need my commentary through the whole thing. Okay, so right here I am putting back down the uh, heat sink and fan assembly, and I will remember, I'm sure, to, of course, plug in that fan connector. But you want to push and wiggle just a little bit, make it, make the stuff flow into the cracks and such. Although the heat, along with the pressure from these retention clips that I'm applying, will probably do that when you fire up your PC. Uh, I just like to be extra careful, it's kind of what I do. Um, it doesn't take too long for all of this to work its amazing magic and as you can see I am having trouble pushing down these retention clips they are a pain in the butt this might be the worst method of holding down a heat sink and fan ever um, but I, I, I'm not gonna rant about that instead I will speed it up so it looks like I'm amazingly fast at doing it uh, yeah that's that that's pretty much it and hopefully you'll see me plug in this fan connector if not I have to rush back over and plug in that fan connector. No, I'm kidding. I made sure it's working. Okay.
Okay, well I'm back here and now I've got the server in its usual hidey hole. It's all hooked up. Power, Ethernet over power. Okay, so see here it's sitting pretty with its two fans all hooked up again. And it should be pretty much all ready to uh, run. Oh, by the way, just kind of curious. I couldn't tell if this was AGP or EISA or what it is. It's this huge, long expansion slot. So, I don't know, maybe somebody could tell me. I, I didn't really do any research, so. Yeah. There's just one more look, and we'll power it on. She's kind of loud. Here we go. Three, two, one. Those are the thought lights. Not sure if you can hear me, but those are the thought lights right there. They'll go in a second when it starts booting. Oh, that's right. It boots off IDE. And there is the status OK indicator. I'd say it's working well. So there's the job well done, thermal paste reapplied, all running. Now to put the, t the cover on, which has this interesting little diagram of how the whole thing works on it. Okay, I'm going to put the cover on now. I'll boot it up by now and I'll go to the remote desktop and log in so uh, you guys can kind of see how the server that I host my website is. Actually, you know what? I'll turn it into a separate video.